All glory, all honor, and all praise unto the highest, the high and lofty one who rideth upon the circle of earth as we are like grasshoppers as the inhabitants of the earth. Bless his holy name. I thank him for his beloved son, my Lord and Savior, who came and shed his precious blood and washed away our iniquities and sins that as we believe in him, we may have everlasting life. We're coming out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 today. Um, an appeal for purity. Amen. I had a dream today, um, this morning. It was two brothers that I went to high school with, Eric Pendleton and a brother named Kai. I don't remember Kai's last name, but they were both in a dream. <laughs> and we were playing basketball. And... Um, it was uh, it was it was interesting, and I re I remember uh, I came to the court and they they was in the middle of the game, and um, I asked what the score was, and it seemed like it had just begun. So I stepped off for a second, and when I came back, it was already a new game, and I'm like that. I just I just walked away and came back, and it's already a new game. I thought the first I thought this game just started. How was it a new game already? And I remember I seen this one brother who didn't look like he could play a lick of a lick of basketball. And he was he was running up and down the court with the brothers. And I'm like, hold up. I'm like, I should have been playing next. You know? I said, yo, I, I got I got I got next. You know what I mean? I got next. I'm making I'm making my point known. So I'm 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 walking amongst the people that's playing, and I'm saying, yo, if it, look, I, I'm gonna need five, I'm gonna need four. So whatever team lose, I'm picking my four that I want, you know what I'm saying, to play this next game. And I remember I seen Eric Pendleton, and I was joking around. I'm like, no, I don't want no light-skinned brothers on my team. <laughs> I want all dark-skinned brothers. <laughs> and then uh, Eric was like, all right, you crazy. You know, my skills is nice. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. Yeah, I remember you made varsity uh, ninth grade freshman year in high school. I remember you made the team with Jihad, the brother Jihad, Jihad. Eric had made a team, you know what I'm saying? And I always knew my skills was was uh, just as good as his, but it was a lot of politics uh, in high school during that time. You know, it, you know, it depended on who your who your father was, how active your father was, and you know what I mean. Uh, EP Eric Pendleton, he was known to play on like all the AAU teams growing up and things like that. All I played was Mount Airy Magic and, and you know what I'm saying? So he, he played in many different leagues, the Sunny Hill League, my, uh, 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 AAU, you know what I'm saying, where they traveled around playing ball. So, you know, they would be, they would be prepared since young children and his father was heavily active uh, in his life when it came to basketball. Yeah. But um, so... I don't know why I had that dream, but I, I, I lifted him up in prayer, you know, right before we, we opened up. And I just want to um, start off with prayer as we begin this, this, uh, this build, this sermon, this word of God, going to the word of God. We're coming out of 1 Thessalonians. Dear Heavenly Father, Holy Father, on high, most high God, I bless your holy name and I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Father, I ask that you use me as a vessel of clay as you are the potter. You are the great architect of the universe. You are the great source of all things, the great spirit of eternal creation. And I bless your holy name and I come before your throne of grace and glory and truth and spirit, Father, that you may hear your servant, your son, your child, as I come to sanctify myself and the people through your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. I ask that your word go forth and touch the ears and touch the hearts and touch the minds and touch the bodies of the people that they may be sanctified by way of your precious Holy Spirit, your Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for waking me up this morning and bringing my heart to want to come minister, Father, giving me the spirit of minister as you called us to be ministers of fire, Lord. I thank you for this day, Lord. I ask that you quicken my spirit and fix in me a clean heart lord fix my spirit and give me a clean heart lord and a sound mind lord that you may be the highlight of my day and the topic of my conversation lord that my conversation may be holy and that you deliver us from temptation in the name of jesus i bless your holy name father i thank you for your goodness and i thank you for your grace that you extend 
from your heavenly throne. I ask that you bless this word today, Lord, and to make yourself known and to come forth through your word in the name of Jesus. For you make yourself known through preaching, Father. And I ask that you come into me, Father. Come unto me, Father. Let your Holy Spirit be upon my temple. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we're dealing with an appeal for purity. This is Paul's appeal for purity. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Amen. Verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, Yahshua HaMashiach, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, Jehovah, the Heavenly Father, so ye would abound more and more. Furthermore, the Greek word for furthermore is loipos, 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 L-O-I-P-O-S, loipos, furthermore, you see, this marks a key transition in the book of Thessalonians, the epistle of the, to the Thessalonians. You see, here Paul introduces his exhortation on practical Christian living. Amen? Practical Christian li living. He urges, he's urging us that we ought to walk, that our walks in this life, that our walk of life may please the Heavenly Father because he's watching us. He's watching us. The intentions of our heart. He's watching the thoughts of our mind. You see? The seven spirits of God go throughout the earth. You see? The seven candlesticks before the throne are the seven spirits of God. The seven eyes that go to and fro. To and from. Throughout the earth. Recording everything. The deeds of man. For he is the Lord of heaven and earth. Amen? Amen? He is the most high God. There is no gods beside him. No gods before him. Even though the Lord Jesus is at the right hand of God. He's at the right hand of power. The right hand of God. The strong arm of God. The word of God. Amen. We ought to walk in a manner that pleases his holiness. Amen. We got to watch what we do. We got to watch how we come about. Amen. Colossians chapter 1 verse 10 says that ye might walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Amen. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. This verse expresses the reason Paul wants us to obtain a knowledge of God's will. And at this time, he was talking to the Colossians. This is a reference verse. It is that they may walk, live properly, and fully please God. It is the holy living that pleases God. It is not the unholy living that pleases God. Unholy living pleases yourself. But we want to please God. That he may delight in us and that we may be the apple of his eye. Amen. The four explanatory particles of verses 10 through 12. Verse 11. Strengthening. With all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long sufferance 
with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, that we are heirs of God. We must join heirs with Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the great shepherd. We are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Amen. Worthy walks and tells the believer to be fruitful in every good work, productive in Christian service, constantly increasing in the knowledge of God. Ever coming to know the Lord better. Amen. Always strengthened with all might, becoming spiritually stronger and stronger. And in the habit of giving thanks, sincerely expressing gratitude to Jehovah in both the pleasant and unpleasant experience in his life, in your Christian walk, in her life. Amen. We always giving gratitude and thanks, even in the midst of our troubles, even in the midst of our uh, solitary confinement, even in the midst of our depress depressive thoughts, depression thoughts, thoughts of depression. Amen. Even in the midst of your unhappiness, glorify his holy name. Strengthen your spirit. By praising the Lord God of heaven and earth, most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthening our spirit through praise, sanctifying our spirits through studying and reading the word and meditating in the word of God. Amen. We have, to, we have to meditate in his word day and night. Day and night, we must meditate in the word of God as it says in Joshua 1.8. Amen? For only then will you be successful. Amen? By meditating in the word of God. Only then, day and night, we must meditate in the law of God that we will be successful. Amen? Because it's, when you keep his commandments, this is what pleases our Lord. Amen. The keeping of the commandments. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest obtain that thou mayest observe, excuse me, to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's when you start to walk in righteousness and holiness, and that when you meditate, Day and night in the word, you're studying. Day and night, the morning comes, you study. The nighttime comes, you study. You wake up three o'clock in the morning, you study. And you keep yourself from iniquity. You keep yourself from transgression. You pray against and rebuke temptation. It's only then that you will have good success in the Lord. He will direct your path and order your steps. You see? Surely... Mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. He will lead you beside the still waters and make you lie down in green pastures and restore your soul. You, you, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you won't fear any evil because God's presence will go before you. You will walk with the pride of the most high, you see, as his child. Being a child of the highest. Only then by meditating in the law. Letting not the word of God depart from your mouth. The law is the word of God. His commandments is his law. His statutes, his ordinance, his precepts. We must be in accordance with his ordinance. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. 
but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, night and day. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. When you study the word of God, you become to know God through his word. And as you know God through his word, you know his will. And that you can be in his will, that his will can be done in your life. And when his will is being done in your life, then your steps will be ordered. Amen. In the name of Jesus, through Christ, your steps will be ordered. He will direct your path. He will enlarge your heart as you run in the way of his commandments. This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He should be the highlight of your day and the topic of your conversation. Let your conversation be holy. What are you talking about? What is your conversation about? You spend all day talking about sports. You spending all day talking about the fight, the Javante Davis fight and, and the Ryan Garcia fight. No. No, let your conversation be holy. Let God be the topic of your conversation and the highlight of your day. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. The devil is a liar. He will put bad thoughts in your mind. And then you have to go into the word of God to combat those thoughts. He is the liar. He is the whisperer. You see, he is the distorter. He is the author of confusion. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. The reason many of our brothers and sisters are not having good success is because they're not putting God first. God is first in our lives. Our, the, the, the whole duty of man is to serve God. We was made to worship the creator. We are a part of his creation. We are creatures in his creation. He is the great, great spirit of eternal creation. Lord of eternal creation. He is the great source of all things. He is the great architect of the universe. We must abide in his bosom and be steadfast in his word in his scripture that his word may fill up our hearts and our minds that we may walk upright before the Lord this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shall meditate study ponder think grasp we must meditate therein day and night Night and day. And thou mayest obtain and observe to do according to all that is written therein. Everything that you come across that you learn through the word of God. You must do accordingly. You must observe it. You learned this today through the word of God. Observe it. You learned this yesterday of the word of God. Observe it. Meditate in it. Ponder on it. Think on it. Be steadfast in it. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. If you want to be prosperous, keep the commandments of God. If you want to be prosperous, be in the statutes and the ordinances of God. Be in his will that you may be the apple of his eye. Amen. Only then will thou be prosperous and successful. Amen. Amen. Only then. Will thou be prosperous and successful? Many of us keep failing because we're not putting God first. We're putting our selfish needs first. God has a will in our lives. Amen. And in that will, it is the best for us to be in his will. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man. You see, blessed are the righteous. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. You see? There we go again. From Joshua 1 8 to Psalms 1 2. Meditate day and night in his law. Learn the laws of God. And you will conquer the laws of man. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You see? You see how that goes hand in hand? Joshua 1 8, Psalms 1 1 through 3. You see that? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Amen? But his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law doeth he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. They will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. The Lord knoweth. He knows. He sees. His eyes go to and fro. For the eyes of the Lord are ten times, ten thousand times brighter than our sun. Amen. Amen. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You see? The key word in this psalm is the word blessed. Blessed. That's the key word. We want to be blessed by God. What is greater than to be blessed by God? You want the blessings of man or do you want the blessings of God? Man will make you think that because you don't have his blessing that you're not blessed. Man will be deceive you. But let no man deceive you. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 Let no man deceive you. Amen. Let no man deceive you. You see. Blessed. It serves here as a pronouncement upon a man. But a certain kind of man. A righteous man. You see. In essence. This psalm is teaching that the blessed or happy man is the righteous man. The happy man avoids evil influences, deeds, and attitudes. He delights in God's word. He's constantly, his face is in the book, not on Facebook. You hear me? His face is in the book. The Holy Word, the Scripture, the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. His face is in the book. Not on Facebook. Not on Instagram. Amen? He delights in God's Word. Amen? Therefore, God causes him to prosper. On the other hand, the ungodly is worth no more than chaff. Just will blow in the wind, blow off like chaff, like dust particles. Amen. And his destiny is judgment. Finally, the evaluation by the Lord himself is described. There is an Ellipsis, which is understood with both clauses in verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. He knoweth the way of the righteous. 
That's why you wonder why this man keep being blessed. You say he don't do right by man, but yet the blessings of God keep falling on him. Amen? Because God knoweth the way of the righteous. You cannot fool God. You cannot fool the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit searcheth all things. Amen? The Spirit searcheth our spirit. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, and it will be blessed. But he also knows the way of the ungodly, and it shall perish. The psalm forms an appropriate introduction to the Psalter, you see? Since it sets before the readers the three characters who will figure mostly in the psalm. You see? Those three is the righteous, the ungodly, and God. You see? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doeth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Bobo Shandero under the Sikyu Yeshobado. Anything he doeth shall he prosper. Amen. We must meditate in the law of God and observe to do it that we may be prosperous. Amen. Amen. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being fruitful in every good work, being prosperous. In everything we do Because we put the Lord first We meditate day and night in his law And we keep his word To keep his word is to follow his commandments To follow his commandments is to love him The apostle said We know those who love God By the commandments that they keep Amen That ye might walk worthy of the Lord Unto all pleasing To love the Lord is to keep his commandments Being fruitful in every good work and increasing and increasing in the knowledge of God Jehovah Yahweh Elyum the most high increasing in the knowledge of God the only way that you can increase in the knowledge of God is by meditating in the law day and night if you meditate in his law day and night, you will increase in the knowledge of God. And when you know the knowledge of God, when you increase in the knowledge of God, then you can be in accordance with his ordinance and be in his will, that his will may be done in your life. And then you can be successful and prosperous. Amen. He will give you the keys of David. Amen. He will make you a landlord. Amen. You will become lords of the land. Amen. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Your life will be joyful. Amen. That long suffering is that walk with Christ that we must pick up our cross daily and crucify the flesh daily. Crucify ourselves of the temptations of the flesh. You see, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. But you have to strengthen your spirit with the word of God. Amen. Meditate. Show thyself approved. Amen. Show thyself approved. Amen. You see, patience is persevering through problems, trials and tribulations and so forth. Long suffering is forbearing the faults and offenses of others. We have to be long-suffering. Christ was long-suffering for us. He bared the sins. He was our sin-bearer. Amen? He was forbearing with our faults and our offenses, our transgressions, our iniquities. Amen? We must be children of God. 
and we must be forbearing. You know, kind of like reminds me, the word forbearing makes me think of my surname, Ferbert or Forbear, as my science teacher, my chemistry teacher in high school, he told me that the last name, Ferbert, is actually pronounced Forbear, that the T is silent. And he said how it had its origins amongst the French, and it was pronounced Forbear. Even though it is a common surname on the island of Bermuda, which is a Negroid island, an island of Negritude, whose roots and ancestry traces back to Africa, the motherland. Predominantly black island owned by the British, Ferbert, but it's pronounced, if I'm not mistaken, forbear. And we must be forbearing, long suffering. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of, of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Amen. For ye know what commandment we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Commandments we gave you. You see, the apostle St. Paul appeals to his apostolic authority, speaking as a representative of the Lord Jesus. You see, he said, we know what commandments we gave you. We gave you by the Lord Jesus. And what commandments did the Lord Jesus give us? He said to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. To love thy neighbor. Amen. This is what he told the young rich ruler. Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Honor thy mother and thy father. Love thy neighbor. Amen. And love thy neighbor. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Verse 3. We in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. This, for this, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, your holiness, that ye should abstain from fornication. Amen. That ye should abstain from fornication. Sanctification here is holiness. To be sanctified is to set yourself apart in holiness. The Lord God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Speak to the congregation, Leviticus 19.2. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Fornication is premarital sex, sex before marriage. With one that is not your wife. One that you have not knocked on the door. You have not knocked on the door to take this woman to be your wife. You see, at the beginning of time, Adam was created first. Amen? And Adam was given Eve. Before Eve was even taken from the rib of Adam, also rib is symbolic for ribonucleic acid, which is the RNA which travels which is the messenger DNA that carries the DNA. Amen. Before Eve was created, Adam was already given his authority. You see, before the creation of the woman, before the making of the woman, Adam was given his leadership roles and authority. Adam had already named the animals before Eve was even created. You see, so the proper order of things is for man to be the head of woman and Christ to be the head of man and God is the head of Christ. This is the proper order of things. Since the beginning of time, man was given one woman. You see, one rib was taken and one woman, one woman was given. But at the fall of Adam, that was disrupted. You see, when Eve co heirsed her husband, Adam, to eat of the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, as she was deceived by the serpent, she coerced her husband. 
And nothing happened when she ate the apple. But it was only when Adam partook of the forbidden fruit was the fall of man and sin entered in into the garden. Because Adam was given the authority. So he was held accountable. You see? We men must not be persuaded by the woman. We men of Christ. We men in Christ Jesus. We were given authority and dominion. Dominionship. But we must be in the will of God. We must keep the commandments of God. We must keep Christ as our head in order to be the head of our women. You see? So since the beginning of time, it was not meant for man to have more than one wife. It said that a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. It doesn't say cleave unto his wives. You see? But you see all the prophets of the Old Testament after the, after the, after the fall of Adam had more than one wife. David had more than one wife. Solomon had more than one wife. Moses had more than one wife. Abraham had more than one wife. Jacob had more than one wife. You see? Although God may have allowed it, He may have allowed it. This was never his true intentions. For you must be equally yoked with the spouse destined for you in order for marriage to work. And you must put Christ first in your life. Put God, put Jehovah first in your life. Because at the head of every man is Christ At the head of woman is man And at the head of Christ is God the Father The Most High This is the proper order of the family You see when you have more than one wife It will, it will, it will cause jealousy in your household Even in countries that is normal it's, It never sets right with the woman It never does You see it in the animal kingdom You see a lion travels with a pride he travels with about seven lioness. Then the reason that man was allowed to have more than one wife in those ancient times was because women was taken as slaves and forced into prostitution. So it was for protection. You see? It was for the reason of protection. But now in this day and time, it is different. There's nothing new under the sun. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Amen. There are three kinds of holiness in the New Testament, which is delineated. The New Testament delineates three kinds of holiness. You see, it's positional holiness. 1 Corinthians 6.11 You have progressive holiness Romans 6.12-23 And you have perfected holiness Thessalonians 3.13 Amen The second kind is in view here Fornication. The Greek word for fornication is porneia. 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 Almost like pornography. Porn. You see? Which destroys the mind and causes tumors on the brain. This means any form of sexual impurity. Sexual immorality. We're dealing with an appeal for purity. We want to appeal for purity that we may be in accordance with his ordinance. 
You see, God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen? That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now, the vessel could be looked at as your temple. But also the vessel could be looked at as, as your wife. Amen? Each of you should know how to control his own vessel, his body and holiness and honor. You see, some people believe that the vessel also refers to one's wife. As she is the vessel which carries your offspring, you see. She, she has the sacred garden of triple darkness, which is her womb, which is the portal of childbirth. She is the vessel which brings forth the children. Amen. We must protect this vessel. We must sanctify this vessel. Amen. This verse would then advocate maintaining proper sexual relations with her to advert immorality. You must maintain proper sexual relations with your wife to keep her and yourself from sexual immorality. So it is not a good thing if you are not having sex with your wife. Amen? Because this will lead and can lead to adultery. It can lead to pornography. It can lead to sexual impurity and sexual immorality. So you must possess this vessel with sanctification and honor. You are to make love to your husband. Make love to your wife. Do not hold back. Amen? Because what does 1 Corinthians chapter 7 say? Amen? It says, verse 5, verse 4, verse 3. <laughs> No, let's go to verse 2. Amen? Amen. Is it nevertheless to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2. Verse 3. Let every, excuse me, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. Benevolence. Do benevolence. Benevolence is, is good. It's righteousness. Goodness. Amen. Do benevolence. Honor your husband. Honor your wife. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power over her own body. But the husband. Amen. The wife, she does not have power over her own body. But that doesn't mean you can rape your wife. If she's not, if she's not willing to have sex, you cannot just take it. Like Rihanna says, take it, take. You can't do that. You can't do that because it says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Okay, so you can't rape your wife. That's not sanctification. That's not holiness. That's not honor. You cannot take it. She has to be willing to give it. But as a wife she does not have power over her own body. She should be submissive unto her husband. And likewise, vice versa. The wife have not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband have not power over his own body, but the wife. 1 Corinthians 7, 4. Verse 5. Defraud. Defraud. Amen. Deprive. 
It means deprive. Don't deprive. Don't deprive because of lack of self-control. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. You should be making love to your husband. You should be making love to your wife. Touch your wife. Touch your husband. Don't sleep on the bed and don't touch each other. Unless she is in her purification stage, menstruating, unless she is fasting, unless she is in prayer, there's no reason that you shouldn't make love to your husband or your wife as often as possible. Defraud not one, each other, one another. De deprive not one another of the love that God gave between a man and a woman that should be made. Amen? That Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. You see? Satan will tempt you when you are inconsistent in making love to your spouse. A sexless marriage is not good. Many people cheat and commit adultery because their husbands are not sleeping with them. Their wives are not making love to them. So they go elsewhere. So don't deprive your spouse of making love because Satan will tempt you for your inconsistency. Verse five, defraud ye not. This is, this is a serious topic, isn't it not? We give thanks and glory unto God. Glory unto God. Hallelujah. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consistent, except it be with consent for a time. Consent. Sexual consent. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again. Come together again. Make love again. That Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. The moment that you stop making love to your wife, you have opened up Pandora's box for her to go elsewhere, for her to feel neglected. For her to feel insecure. And once she feels neglected and insecure from your inconsistency of love making, of making love to her, you have now opened up Pandora's box. You will open up a can of worms, so to speak, for sin to enter, for Satan to tempt your spouse, whether it be the husband or the wife, for him or her to go elsewhere. Now she is open to sin because Pandora's box has been opened because of your inconsistency. You're not making love to your husband. You're not touching your husband. You're not performing your wifely duties to your spouse, to your husband. You're not performing your duties as a husband to your wife, making love to her. Amen. Amen. So we must be mindful of the things that causes impurity. Inconsistency with the word of God allows sin to come into your life. Inconsistency with the word of God allows the spirit of the fear of God to diminish. Inconsistency with the word of God takes you from out of the bosom of the father. Amen. We must be steadfast in the word of God. Amen. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel his wife his temple his body in sanctification and honor not in the lust of 
not in the lust of con 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 cu concus what is this word this word is c o n con cuspicience con cuspicience not in the lust of con cu piscience even as the gentiles which know not god meaning don't go unto your wife with lust but go unto her with love you see it's not about lust it's about love when you make love you don't you don't hump your wife you make love to your wife you see it should be done with love and sanctification and purity. You're making love. You see? Not with the lust of concupiscence. Concupiscence. Even as the Gentiles which know not God. You see? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. Let your speech always, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. The salt is the word of God, the scripture. That ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. I had a conversation with a brother the other day. Yesterday, actually. And we, we spoke about how, you know, men should not be with older women. And one brother said, well, it's, that's, it's not written nowhere in the Bible that man should not be with an older woman. It's not a sin. And he's correct. It's not a sin. And it's not written anywhere in the scripture where it says a man should not be with an older woman. In fact, the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was married. His first and most beloved wife was 15 years older than him. Khadijah. His first and most beloved wife was 15 years older than him. When he was 25, she was 40 already. She was old enough to be his mother. And that's why a lot of times men like older women because older women sometimes are more motherly than that of younger women. They like the younger woman because the young woman has, sometimes they may have more of a sex appeal, which caters to your lust, which caters to your flesh. But the older woman, they have more of an appeal of, of a motherly woman, you see? But Adam was not made after Eve. Adam was made before Eve, you see? Thus, Adam was older than Eve, not younger than Eve. And the commandment is to be fruitful and multiply. If you marry an older woman who is going through menopause, then you won't be able to be fruitful with her. If you marry an older woman who may have had her tubes tied because she already had her children and you decide to marry her and she's 15 years older than you and now she can't give you children, so now you can't produce children. When the commandment says be fruitful and multiply. So we must use discernment. It's not a commandment that you can't marry an older woman. It's not a sin that you can't marry an older woman. But it's wise to have women that are equally yoked. And usually the woman that will be equally yoked to you will be the woman around your age or the same age or even younger. Because the woman's mind sometimes is sharper than a man. So you need to balance it out. With a woman that may be younger. Majority of the prophets. Married women that were younger. Not older. With the exception to the prophet Muhammad. Make him salam. Peace and blessings be upon him. 
where his first and most beloved wife was Khadijah. She was 15 years older than him. But the younger woman would be more fertile. She would be more fertile, the younger woman, than the older woman. The older woman might be barren, but the younger woman most likely will be fertile. After a certain age, a woman will experience menopause. She will stop even menstruating. And once she stops menstruating, setting her men straight, as you know, when, she, when a woman menstruates, her awareness is heightened. Once she stops menstruating, she can no longer conceive. She can no longer bear children because she is now barren. You see? Like a tree that does not produce fruit. So it's not a sin to be with an older woman, but it would be wiser to be with a younger woman. You see? It's not a sin to have more than one wife, but it would be wise to have one wife for some people. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that you cannot have two more than one wife. In fact, the scripture actually confirms that you can have more than one wife. I believe it's in Exodus. Where it says that you can have more than one wife. Let me see. Let me find that scripture for you. That scripture for you. I want to say it's Exodus 22.10. Let's go to it. This is the law of God. Genesis, Exodus. In fact, Moses had two wives. The scripture. It's not Exodus 22 10, it's Exodus 21 10. And it says, let's start at uh, verse 8. Verse 8. If she please not her master who hath betrothed her to himself, then shall he let her be redeemed to sell her unto a strange nation. He shall have no power, seeing he hath dealt deceitfully with her. Verse 9. And if he had betrothed her unto his son, he shall deal with her after the manner of daughters. Verse 10. This is the kicker. Exodus 21 10. If he take him another wife, her food, her remnant, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. If he take him another, another means that when you use the word another, that means an additional. That means also. Additional means one plus one equals two. In addition, is to add on. When you when you when you when you, when you say in, in addition, that means you're adding on. You're, you're adding on. So if you say, if he take him another wife in addition to his first wife. Her food, her raiment, her raiment, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not diminish. Meaning, it is not a commandment that you cannot have more than one wife. Amongst the Muslims, they can have four wives. Jacob had four wives. David had eight wives. Minus Michal, it was seven wives. Solomon had 700 wives. So Solomon, the son of King David, King Solomon, he, he, he multiplied what his father had. His father had seven wives, minus Michal, who he, who he uh, basically divorced, the, the daughter of King Saul, because she was so mad at him when he was dancing with the Spirit of the Lord, carrying the Ark of the Covenant to, into Jerusalem. He danced in his ephod, his ephod. You know, his garment that just wraps around his groin area. He, he danced and danced and danced with the spirit 
You know, she felt like a king should not act in that manner. Uh, like a king can't be filled with the Holy Ghost, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So, you know, he, he, de he dealt with her, you know, because she was she, she had despised him looking from the window. So minus M M Mikhail, which were made eight wives, that was his first wife, daughter of King Saul. So he had seven wives. So Solomon took seven and multiplied that and made 700. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And he was known as the wisest man on the planet. But it was his strange wives. The scriptures say, take not many wives. A king should not take many wives. It was his strange wives that led him away from the Lord. And in his old age, his heart was not with the Lord like his father David. So you can have more than one wife, but save yourself the suffering. You see, one is enough for, for some. For some, maybe some men can handle more than one wife. They can, they can do it. They can do it. But they, they also say, trust them as far as you can see them. Your trust should be in the Lord. And the union was between a man and a woman, not man and women. You see, it's not about soul mates. It's about a soul mate. Adam wasn't given Eve and Eva and Evelyn. He was just given Eve. He wasn't, three ribs wasn't taken from his rib cage. It was just one rib that was taken from his rib cage to create and make Eve. As he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Amen. So if he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not diminish. So if you can still maintain the first wife when you take a second wife, then if 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 it, if it works if it works for you if if it works out for you, more power to you. But that was that that was not the will of God since the beginning of time, since the beginning of man. Amen. It was not. Exodus 21.10. And you see this ties right into 1 Corinthians 7, 3 and 5. Which, which we are reading out of, right? We're in Thessalonians chapter 1 right now. But we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Amen. Three and five. Let the husband render unto the wife, not wives. Now this now. Exodus 21, that's the Old Testament. First Corinthians is the New Testament. You see, we went from the, the, the New Testament to the Old Testament back to the New Testament. But Christ said, I didn't come to change the law, but to fulfill the law. He said, not one jot or tittle of the law shall change or pass until all be fulfilled. He said, heaven and earth will pass away than for the law to change. You see, but Christ brought us grace. We are under the grace of Christ, the grace of God. We are under grace and truth. So we are not under the law. The person that's trying to live by the law makes grace and truth null and void. And grace and truth makes the law null and void. We're not under the law. We can't, we can't live to the law by the letter. So we needed the grace and truth that the Lord Jesus Christ brought us. It was necessary for him to shed his precious blood on Calvary and to die for our sins. That we may be redeemed through his precious blood. Those that believe on his name and keep the commandments of his father. Amen. So the apostle St. Paul said, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power over her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. If you have more than one wife, you can't be a bishop in the church. Amen. You can't be a bishop in the church if you have more than one wife. No, no way, Jose. According to Timothy... 
You cannot be a bishop in the church. The qualifications of bishops. This is true saying if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. First Timothy chapter three, a bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. This is for Christianity and Christianity. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Not saying you can't be a bishop because maybe you had been went through divorce and you married again. But it's saying that you can't have more than one wife at one time. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Vigilant. Sober. Of good behavior. Good character. Given to hospitality. Apt to teach. You know, apt ready to teach not given to wine no striker not greedy of filthy lucre but patient not a brawler not covetous one that ruleth well his own house having his children in subjection with all gravity for if a man know not how to rule his own house how shall he take care of the church of God not a novice Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and a snare of the devil. You see? So you can't be a bishop and have more than one wife. Amen? Amen? But for a deacon is different. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy or filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so, must their wives plural so for a bishop a bishop can only add one wife but for a deacon it's different even so must their wives be grave not slanderers sober faithful in all things let the deacons be the husbands of one wife okay there we have it let the deacons so when it says even so must their wives is speaking about the deacons in plural, not a deacon having more than one wife, but the deacons, plural, is speaking about the deacons, the wives of deacons, you see? Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Verse 12, let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children in their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. So deacons and bishops must have only one wife. So in Christianity, as a Christian, you are only to have one wife. Now, if you're a Muslim or a Hebrew Israelite, that's different. But as a Christian man, it's one wife. So if you want more than one wife, then Christianity is not the way for you. If that's what's more important to you. But holiness is one wife. Amen? One wife in your one life. But that's not always the case. Sometimes the second marriage... People are more happy in their second marriage because they have learned their mistakes from the first marriage. That's why marriage counsel, Christian marriage counsel, is very important before marriage. Because people don't even know how to be husbands. People don't even know how to be wives. They don't know their duties. So that's why you must have counsel. And you must be steadfast in the scripture to know your duties as a spouse. As a husband and as a wife. We're coming out of 1 Thessalonians. We're in chapter 4. 
We're at verse six. That no man go beyond and defraud, defraud his brother in any matter, in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. Amen. For God have not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. That's why you should have one wife. Amen. We have to. Take notes and take heed. To the word of God. Verse 6. That no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also have forewarned you and testified. Go beyond. Means to overstep this moral law. You see. Defraud means literally take advantage of rob or cheat. If any matter... In this matter, refers to sexual misconduct deplore in the previous verses. It could refer to infidelity to one's spouse or to an unmarried person committing adultery with someone's spouse. You see? You're having sex with another man's wife. You're confiding in another man's wife. You're reaching out <laughs> to another man's wife. You're sitting down and drinking wine with another man's wife. You're holding and hugging another man's wife. These things are corruption, transgression, iniquity, and will lead to sin. Amen? Amen. Verse 7, for God have not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Leviticus 11.44. God have not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. Amen. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. It is your job. It is your duty to sanctify yourself. God gave us free will, but we must be in the will of God. Let me say that again. God gave us free will. Amen. But it is wise to be in the will of God. Amen. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy. For I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. Like Eve creeping around with the snake, with the serpent. She creeping around with a, a talking serpent, a talking Walking snake. You see? A snake man. A snake dizoid. She up here walking with this creeping thing. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy. For I am holy. Leviticus 11, 45 and 44. Verse 46. Leviticus eleven forty six. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 47, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Amen. 
Purification of the woman. Chapter 12, Leviticus. Leviticus 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. Verse 3. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Verse 4. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. 33 days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nothing holy, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, a female child, then she shall be unclean two weeks as in her separation. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six Days. That's 36 days. You see? Purification of the woman. We're dealing with an appeal for purity. Amen? Purifying our souls. Purifying our hearts. Purifying our minds. Amen? Verse 8, we're coming out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're about to wrap this up. This is purification of the soul. He therefore, verse 8, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Verse 9, but as touching Brotherly love ye need not that I write unto you for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Amen. Matthew twenty two thirty nine. 39. Ye are taught to love one another. Matthew twenty two thirty nine. Jesus said unto him, this is the great commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Verse 39. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Andra sikio ye shobado makandro bobo shandro. Yea, Lord. I bless your holy name. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you for your sanctification through your word. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Teach me your way, Father. In Jesus' name. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And the second is like unto it. The second is like unto the first. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Amen? You have to love your neighbor. You can't hate your neighbor and say you love God. How many people can't stand their neighbors? People you live right next to. People that will save your life. If your house was on fire, they'll be the ones that. Are... 
and form the fire fighters. Amen. If you had a someone break into your home and you weren't there, they would be the ones that that's that seen it, that saw it. Amen. Love thy neighbor. Amen. This is the great commandment. But when the Pharisees heard, had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. <laughs> Jesus had silenced the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, same phonetics as liar, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And that's when Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor. Tell your neighbor when you next time you see your neighbor, you tell your neighbor. I love you, neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I love you, neighbor. Love thy neighbor and treat your neighbor with love. Don't just talk about it, be about it. Because actions speak louder than words. Amen. We're coming out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We're about to wrap this up at verse 12. We're at verse 10. And indeed ye do it to, and indeed ye do it toward all brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. You see that? Study literally means aspire or determine. Work with your own hands. This suggests that some believers had abandoned it, abandoned it, their occupations, believing Christ's second coming was near at hand. Some people felt like, you know, I ain't got to do this work no more. Christ is coming. I'm just going to wait for him. No, you still do your work. Still do your work. Work with your hands. A man works with his hands. You see? Amen. I used to pick up rubbish and recycle with my hands. About 700, 900 buckets a day. Or more, over a thousand buckets a day, actually. A thousand buckets, a thousand trash cans. We removing the filth from your house. We taking you what you don't want. And some of it was our treasure. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Amen? Amen. Verse 12 in closing. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. And that ye may have lack of nothing. No thing. Lack of nothing. The biblical means of supplying one needs, one's needs is to work. And are important for the Christian work ethic. We work with our hands as Christians. Jesus Christ was a carpenter. You see? I was a sanitation engineer. I also did some carpentry work, some masonry work, mixing cement with the Jamaicans and things, putting on the slate on the roof, putting the stucco up on the wall, some of my trades. We don't want to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Amen. So I pray to you. I pray to the most high in Jesus name that this word comes unto you.
that it is good for your spirit. Amen? Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, power, dominion, and majesty both now and forever as the people of God say, amen, amen, and amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Go with God.